Hello everyone and welcome to another PoE Path of Exile video. And uh, this time I do have quite a few updates made to the build. There is uh, a lot of gear pieces that have changed, but first of all, let me showcase the maps I've been farming with uh, Ultimatum. Should be should be fine. We're gonna take this for. Uh, we're gonna still keep the less chaos damage taken. And I'm using the scarab of bribing, double scarab for bribing, scarab of inscription to drop a inscribe inscribe ultimatums instead of catalyst. This so the taskmaster always appears at the end. And uh, just uh, more shrines. I'm level 96 and 50% uh, experience, so I'm not dying too much. God. The ultimatum is going to take a little bit of the time of the video, but in the meantime, you can see uh tankiness has gone through the roof and uh right now when i've died is mostly due to critical hits so i added the uh less damage taken from crits mastery punished, and uh so crits. and this is unfortunate because it's stone circles it's the worst one but anyway so yeah, critical hits kind of chunk the build because I don't I don't really have uh, the cap on less critical damage taken, which I think I can get from tattoos, and I might just do that. Uh, just lose a little bit of strength for that. Then uh, we became um, ailment immune through a storm shroud, so that means I could switch off the Brian King Pantheon. Or in this case, Arakali, because uh, what remains as the greatest threat to the build, in my opinion, is damage over time. Because, yeah, the Jack Diaz gives you like 200, uh, 400 region per enemy that is bleeding. But if the enemy dies, then you lose all that region. And you can still get chunked by the OTs. Oh, it can be evaded because I don't care. And yeah, the, the, the thing about crits is that uh, you don't notice that there's a lot of damage because you're blocking most of it, but then you suddenly don't block and then you die. So I think that's what remains like the greatest threat to the build. Outside of that, um, right now I'm not running obviously physical reflect, but also I'm not running Hold on recovery reduction, it's kind of a bane of this build. And uh less chance to block, of course. It's very, very bad. Because it also reduces your armor, so it's a double whammy of negative mods for you. Here we're taking a lot more damage, but this map I'll show you the mods. Uh, this is like a six mod a map, so 185 extra crit. Uh it has chain. Uh, reduce effect of auras, less suppression, so I have like 95% uh, suppression with uh, the double roll, and I have vulnerability. Oh, nice. Okay. Relentless assault. Okay, I'll finish the ultimatum and then just uh be torn to shreds. I'm currently not farming tier 17s because there were a few pieces that were missing from the build and 
I want to see if I can get to level 100 because I've never leveled to 100 in this game. Maybe I can grab this. I don't know. Breaking Dead is very annoying, especially when fighting the Taskmaster. But always crit might just kill me, so I think I'm gonna go for this instead. And uh, just be careful with the with the blades. What happens is that they will they will do that cross pattern and and it will leave a very very heavy uh, physical DOT. You can see, it was a lot of damage. thing is every time I suppress I gain a, a last charge because of the suppression uh, point on the tree so that helps me sustain a little bit and I have like a 25% quality eternal life flask with uh, this mod that gives you extra recovery if you don't use it in low life and it's uh, a very large amount of recovery the 30% of 2600 and we got a patient Okay. Uh, not the best catalyst. Okay. I'll finish. Let's just finish the map. Shouldn't take too long. These maps are not very uh, juicy for gold. Simply because we're not using like ambush, which is, I think, the biggest source right now. And of course, in 317, you get almost 100k golds, or even more if you're running like a uh, rarity. So if you haven't seen uh, Captain Lance's video regarding uh, rarity and gold, you should check it out. But in essence, uh, the gold drops seem to be related to item rarity, so that's why I'm running a gold flask, and that kind of makes sense. And if you can afford it, you can use uh, increased item rarity support in your links as well. If you have more than enough damage and you can afford to run on the 5 link, then that will increase the gold drops significantly. So uh, I suggest you do that. So even in tier 17, um, you can see I have 53k. I'm gaining 20 to... 15 to 20k, 20, even I have gained 25k gold from a single map. So that's nice enough. That that amount is enough to sustain the mappers and all of the resource gathering for like an hour. So imagine if if in that hour you run 30, 20, 30 maps, then you're running gold and you can you can keep your map your mappers running for a while. And that's, this is the point where I think having the mappers is actually worth it because before that there was a lot of, a lot of gold required. So the maps are not super fast that, that I'm running because of the ultimatum, of course, but uh, it's a lot of XP and the rewards are not bad. And so that's why I'm running them. So let's go over the gear and passive tree first. So I'm level 97. Came here for the lucky suppression. This again, this gives you this is 17% suppression chance. And when you suppress, you gain uh, life flash charges. Uh, from uh, probably seen Goratha's video, Goratha drop resolute technique. And I looked at it and it kind of makes sense because Eviscerate has, uh, cannot be evaded, so you don't need accuracy for Eviscerate. You don't need accuracy for Crossing Fist. And Bladestorm hits so many times per second that even at 50% accurate, I think it's more than accuracy. I think it's more than enough for you to uh, apply the aggravates. And also because um, I added this, I'm, I'm testing it, and overall, you know, I really can't tell whether this is working or not, but I think it 
kind of makes sense in my head tech that I'm doing, which is since I, since I drop resolute technique, that means that even if my crit chance is low, it does have a chance to crit. And I'm 5% chance because I haven't invested in crit at all. But there is this point here that says that uh, retaliate every fourth retaliation skill you use will always critically strike. And I don't know if this is like individual uses of retaliation skills or each and every one of them will have their own counter. But with the addition of this no forgiveness and this, sometimes I can change four, four or five uh, eviscerates in a row, which means that I, you can consider that to having like 25% chance to crit because, you know, one in every four hits will always crit. So it's probably even a little bit more, right? 25% chance to crit. So that means that I can now use this. 25% uh, to aggravate bleeding with, uh, with crits. So this is 50%. I grabbed this just for the extra chance to crit, but uh, maybe it's, it's, it's not worth grabbing that. But this mastery allows me to grab the uh, DOT per endurance charge. And here I have... Uh, I don't even have the 80% extra crit chance, which, you know, might might even make sense to, to put in there. And so this is 50% chance to aggravate. Then there is 10%, that's 60%. Then, where it matters is when you're fighting bosses, there is 20% here. And uh, vulnerability is another 10%. So, I can almost guarantee uh, aggravation on boss fights, pretty much. At least one in every fourth hit will guarantee an aggravation. And, you know, you have Bladestorm. Bladestorm will not... Crit, but it will still hit a lot of times, so it will get this 10% plus whatever you have in vulnerability and, and the gloves. So that's why I grab this and that's why I, I'm using this point. And also it makes the skill be used so fast that I don't know, you feel like you're playing lacerate with a multi-strike. Because it's it's very, very fast. It's like a, you see, it's 0 0.2 seconds attack time. 0.42 seconds that time and uh this is 50 this is 40 and uh this is 70 percent increased damage so you know for three points seems uh very very worthwhile uh, this mastery i haven't changed which is which is the increased duration this i have the reduced costs because i feel like uh the 10 percent is kind of already covered here with 25 percent and uh i wanted to Handle my mana a little bit better. This costs nine with that, and uh, crushing fist costs just four mana. And uh, yeah, blade storm is even more costly than eviscerate at this point. But with that, I also could afford to drop the block soul blade and the tincture points here, and I can keep my tincture for four to five seconds, maybe six seconds. And when the tincture is activated, let me let me pull up the. The POV real quick. Okay. So uh the tincture is like okay, I need I need to fix the mod again. So if you remove this from melee weapons in POV, then it works. And it will tell you exactly how much damage you will gain when you activate it. So look at that. It's, you know, it's 50% more damage for six seconds. So you use the tincture. The tincture will go on cooldown. In this case, I rolled mine with uh, reduced cooldown recovery speed or increased cooldown recovery rate. And you want to get one with 30% quality if you can and try to roll the tier one damage over time multiplier. And uh, then you can bless orb the implicit. And they increase it. And if you roll a mod that increases the effect, it increases both the increased damage with bleeding and the damage or time multiplier. So you can get like 50% DOT and like 130% increased damage with bleeding. It's insane. So you really, really want to use the tinctures. 
And the way you can do that is having a very low cost skill with uh with an enough mana pool and mana leech so you can sustain it for you know six to eight seconds and then you will notice that damage over there okay then uh less damage taken here you can you can look at the tree yourself uh but you know the rationale about some of those things is that drop resolute technique so that means i can crit and since one in every four hits can crit i grab critical strike affliction which will be like 102 let's see it here level 20 is one 102 damage over time multiplier every time i crit so one in fourth hit will have 100 percent dot so if i'm if i have a hit that has 100 percent dot and I high roll it with volatility and there is Latas Coil. That means that I can keep that bleed for like... Mm, right now I'm running Awaken Swift, of, Swift Affliction. Just level 1 at this moment, by the way. Um, and with the increased element duration, which is here. I added this 20% critical strike to kind of simulate. Uh, but it should be instead like 15% to simulate that I have. With 10 want to have it at like uh 25 percent or something like that so that's what the kind of the gain that you could expect from critical strike affliction when compared to other uh, supports now uh is this better in reality apparently deadly elements is better but i don't like the elements because it's basically uh stops you from being able to leech so i think this is a good one and uh Cruelty, cruelty is worse because on bosses, unless you get the effect of cruelty mastery here, it's impossible to, to make it 40%. So that means cruelty will give you 30% and Awakened Swift Affliction will give you at level 5 like 40, I think it's 44%, 49% more damage. So it's way better than cruelty even already at uh, level 1. But it reduces the duration, you know, so uh, there's that. But even... Even then, I have almost a 6 second bleed duration. And you know, if I get more uh, bleed duration elsewhere, I can maybe keep those high rolls for a little longer. Which will be like, uh, I think, here... No, yeah, this is bleed duration. So apparently this will be like 10% and this will be like 6% because of the increased duration. Then... Uh, I bought the Light of Meaning. I bought the uh, Light of Meaning, increased physical damage. This is an insane upgrade. Uh, it's very expensive at the moment. I think I bought mine for like 10 Divines. And yeah, the mods. Yeah, you can see it here, 11 Divines. So it's pretty much the same. And I also bought a Storm Shroud. So that's why, uh, that's I think one of the upgrades that I was prioritizing because I was running Brian King. And Brian King, it was solely for the purpose because uh, the stun does nothing because I'm running on Wavering Stance. And the Reduce Effect of Shield was working because I had the Reduce Effect of Shield craft on Gloves. Effect of Shield. So you can get 40% uh, on the Gloves. Oh, you can get 60 on, on rings. I didn't know that, but yeah. You get Effect of Chill and Shock on the Gloves for um, alongside the Branking, so that's 90% reduced Effect of Chill. And then you use Garukan with that same craft, and that's like 100% Effect of Shock reduction. So you're kind of immune, but you're, um, you're kept running these two Pantheons. So uh, that's what I was doing before. So in case you, you're having problems with ailments, you can do that. And uh, for Ignite, what I was doing is I grabbed these points here and this mastery says you cannot be ignited while a maximum endurance charges, which you always should be because you're blocking all the time and blocking generates endurance charges for you. But what I did is I bought the Storm Shroud and i crafted these boots i bought the base for like 100 chaos with already the uh avoid 40 percent avoid chance shock and then you craft that with these boots 
uh, the Essence of Torment Boots, which can roll up to 60% in Tier 1, uh, in, in uh, you know, the highest roll. So that's 100% Shock Avoidance. If you don't get, like, this tier of boots alongside with the uh, highest tier of the Essence, you can get 20% Ailment Avoidance on the Shield Mastery, and that way you can also get 100% Shock Avoidance, and that will make us completely immune to every single element, right? There you go. 200% freeze, 200% so avoiding every element. And that allows me to switch my pantheons. I can switch off Garukan for whatever. So uh, I'm doing a lot of ultimatum. Ultimatum can generate Chaos Cloud. So I use Shakari for, uh, or Shakari for less uh, Chaos damage taken. And Arakali for the same reason. Damage over time is the bane of the build at the moment. You're basically immortal against hits. On, again, in, on let's is a crit, you cannot die from, from hits. But uh, a burning ground can kill you. So if you're running a burning ground map or you're using uh, the Searing Exarch, Searing Exarch altars have a lot of chance to generate burning ground. So you switch to the Aberath Pantheon, which makes you unaffected and gives you some movement speed on burning ground. So the Pantheon is very... It's something that you should flex around. If you're running a crit map, use Solaris, uh, use the improved Solaris, so you can you will take a hit, but then you have four seconds of not taking damage from crits, and then since monsters will have high crit chance, you're basically not taking uh, crit damage for the rest of the duration of that map. And you know you can flex other things around. If you're running into region, you can use Rislata for that. Okay. Um, I needed Dex, so that's why I grabbed these points. And I think, you know, the movement speed is not bad. The extra intelligence is not bad. And, you know, grabbing 10 points. I prefer to put these two points here than just putting a Dex point here. Simply because, uh, you know, the movement speed is good. Now, uh, you could argue that that is wasteful. And that you maybe want to put those into more life. And then just grab the Dex here. But, you know... Uh, and the dex requirement is because this base requires 173 dex. It's a ton. What is the highest armor base? Okay. Uh, now let's actually talk about the gear, right? Again, Jack the Axe have the mood because I haven't crafted a better axe. Uh, crafting melee weapons, it's kind of annoying to me. But, you know, at some point I will have to do it. But the thing is, I cannot go away with crafting a mediocre weapon it has to be absolutely great to even beat jab the axe and i'll show you uh, it's because it's simply because of the of the aura that jack the axe gives you so you can craft a reaver axe here one-handed axe reaver axe is the high it has the highest uh high roll damage and um of course you will want a 28 to 30 percent quality to even make it better and say you roll uh tier two say you add essence of contempt so you craft with essence of contempt um, huh? so you roll you will guarantee that and then you roll the um you have to roll this mod but let's say you mid roll it and then you roll whatever in suffixes suffixes don't really matter um unless you actually get damage over time multiplier here then it does matter and then you finish it with the crafting bench and you add increased physical damage uh this 100 to 100 to 129 percent and that's a 412 dps weapon and it will tell you here that it will give you you know a ton of damage 41%. Then you remove that Jack the Axe. And how much you gain that? A little bit less than a million, right? Now, that's a kind of GG craft, right? So, if you don't hit the damage or time multiplier, suddenly you're looking at a weapon that it will give you a lot less damage. See? And that is costly. So that's why I, I really want to hit, you know, something like that uh, won't, wouldn't be too insane to hit with the DOT. Maybe if you fix the prefixes, 
uh, then you can those suffixes cannot be changed but again it's a craft that is maybe 10 to 12 divines and at that point maybe uh, looking for an actual weapon on the market might be a good idea so uh, in the helmet I wanted to get I want to get cap spell suppression I'm missing two pieces with suppression the boots are not gonna change for a while because I will need to get another base to craft for the shock avoidance but for the helmet, I got a, uh, so that's a tier one, uh, a mid lane resistance roll, and bad uh, armor and evasion rating modifiers. Because uh, I wanted the the actual armor elevation without the stone and plug recovery, but it's fine. It has life, it has resistance, and it has tier one suppress, and it's the highest base, the highest hybrid base. Same thing about this armor. Suppression, life, chaos, rest. Um, the gloves, same thing, and uh, most importantly, the implicit in the glove. So that's uh, it's a greater for physical damage or time multiplier, and then the aggravate, which is also a greater one. Uh, Calendar Touch, I bought it for like nine divines a few days ago. They're still kind of the same price, but this basically allows me to just craft one good ring and then forget about the rest. Uh, this is a decent one. I like the Rico because it helps with uh, mitigate one of the biggest issues of the build, which is the uh, life recovery, in my opinion. Uh, then triple rest, uh, tier one life, and tier one physical damage to attacks. This I think I bought for like three or four divines. And you know, that's duplicated through the Calandra's Touch. So that's a very, very good ring. It's a, it was a decent upgrade. This one, it's giving me all the intelligence I need to run Malevolence, and it's giving me a little bit more now because I can actually level Hex Touch to level 20 to reduce the, uh, you know, the penalty to curse effect that it gives at lower levels. And I can actually get increased curse duration, which, you know, it doesn't really matter too much because Bladestorm hits too many times a second. Uh, I added the quality to vulnerability to get the chance to aggravate. That's why you need to run Vuln instead of getting a Vuln on hit ring in this build, in my opinion. And uh, the shield hasn't changed because, you know, it's pain and, uh, you know, Rizlatha. Uh, regarding the links, I'm running, you know, again, Critical Strike Afflictions, Awaken Swift Affliction, and I'm leveling the Awakened Brutality and Awakened Melee. Level 5 Awakened Brutality gives you a chance to crush enemies. You'll see here. I think you get it level 4 already. No, level 5. Level 5, you get 10% chance to crush enemies for 4 seconds on hit. And crush is uh, basically reducing enemy physical damage reduction. So... Uh, this maybe is not being calculated uh, well in POB, but should, in theory, uh, increase the, the actual bleed damage because physical damage reduction applies to both hits and, and, and damage over time. So this should actually give you um, a, a damage increase, even though it doesn't say so in uh, POB. And the Awakened Nilly Fist is just a ton of damage at level 5. Uh, Intimidate doesn't do anything for you, but, you know, it's a lot of damage. So, uh, running laps to get the experience faster is a good option. You can get up to 100 million sometimes in the lap. Um, then, uh, Fist of War with uh, Calling Strike and trying to get Fortify here. It's very inconsistent to have Fortify here. So, but again, because I'm running Flesh and Stone... I don't, I don't die that much. Level 96, 54 experience, I don't die that much. So I, I find it to be okay. But if I wanted to do 317, I will look for maybe uh, adding adding 45 back to the main link instead of maybe the Awakened Swift Affliction. That will be an option. But in general, you know, this kind of works for the, for the general mapping. Uh, War Banner, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Chance to Bleed. And then a Molten Shell with a Blood Rage with Cast when Damage Taking, because I just get annoyed uh, by pre trying having to press Blood Rage every minute or so. Uh, regarding the Flask, uh, you will probably want the F uh, Masochist or Flagellant, which is the game three charges when you are hit. And whatever suffix uh, risk effect, of course, is very nice. Um, this increase evasion, you want increase evasion and increase armor in, in the Flask. So that you really gain a sizable defensive boost when they are active. So 
my armor goes to 23%, and even more when I start using my retaliation skills. Then uh, the gold flask for rarity and uh, eternal light flask with the... Uh, usually you want instant recovery when on low life and uh, the recovery additional life when, uh, when you're not on full life really helps you uh, with the build's recovery issues. And the tincture, we already went over that. So, I think that's all of the pieces that we put together. Yeah, I forgot to mention the intuitive lip. Uh, this one, I, I got gambling with Gwenin. It was like one divine at the moment. I, I, I thought it was kind of efficient to put here. And it also made even more sense to me to drop Resolute Technique because I didn't really need these travel points anymore so I think it was worth it uh, I was running these axe nodes but I dropped for uh, these points here uh, arguably because this is five points but the damage gain is pretty similar in the end and you get the mastery which is arguably a little bit better you can get some extra area of effect or the 10% more damage against enemies on low life but, you know, cutting this part, um, I've, I've, I've in general gained a lot of damage, especially because of this. So, I think I think it's not too bad at the moment. Again, uh, tier 16s are being run smoothly. I haven't done any other pinnacle bosses. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's all I have for this update. It already has been a very long video but you know I'm, uh, the timestamps are there so you can skip to the part that you're interested in and you know if you watch for this long I deeply appreciate it I deeply appreciate it if you would leave a like and if you can subscribe uh, you know the, the usual thing thank you very much and if you do let me know what's your favorite type of ice cream if you do like ice cream and if you don't you can also let me know you know I don't like ice cream Thank you very much and uh, have a great day and see you in the next one.